having that first kickoff opening the season, um, it, it was it was awesome. Team called the Houston Oilers. I don't think anyone remembers a team called the Oilers these days. And uh, that was our opener. I do remember it was a loss. It was a painful loss. Played mainly on special teams, but to receive uh, uh, that ball on the first kickoff return was, it was electric. I was just hoping that I wouldn't drop it, but uh, uh, it, it was a historical event. There have been 44 U.S. presidents. There have been over 300 Americans in space. But there are only 32 teams in the National Football League. In 1993, a sleepy city in Northeast Florida was awarded one of these coveted NFL franchises. Here's the commissioner. Here's the commissioner. Um, membership has selected Jacksonville as the 30th NFL club. But getting to that moment was a bruising battle. If you really believe that the taxpayers are not going to benefit from an NFL team, get real. It was completely unpleasant, cursing and yelling back and forth. He was mad. And rightfully so, he was mad. A bunch of short-sighted people, you know, making this decision about the literally the future of generations in North Florida based on, you know, a bunch of petty little bickering. A 15-year odyssey of unfulfilled hope and hard knocks. I think we have to be transparent and say, well, there was some, had to be some feelings of doubt. Now I'm thinking to myself, what in the world? have you gotten yourself into in this one? It was a few moments of uh, anxiety. real anxiety. Turned Jacksonville's fourth and long into a game changer. Oh yeah, this is a Cinderella story. There's no question of that. Before professional football came to Northeast Florida, another industry propelled the region onto the national stage. Film in Jacksonville started in 1907. We were Hollywood before there was a Hollywood. Many, many stars came here. The Valentinos, the Barrymores, Theta Barra. They did crazy things. To save money, they would pull the alarms so that the police and the fire would roll and they could get good footage for free. They would burn a building without a permit. They'd run a car off uh, Pine Street, now Main Street, into the river, you know, just to get action film. But unfortunately, a new mayor came to town and he didn't like all those bohemians. And so he sort of ran them out of town. So by 1919, all the major film studios were gone. They didn't realize that that could have been a way to make Jacksonville very, very famous for years to come. But many people are not prescient. <laughs> they don't know what's going to happen in the future. Unlike later, uh, I guess it was Jake Godbowl that knew that football was the answer for Jacksonville. <laughs> Let's do that Jacksonville cheer, Ready Tiffany. Ready for the Come Jacksonville on. cheer, Here we go. Give me a J. In 1980, Jacksonville Mayor Jake Godbold got feedback on the city from a pollster. Said, Mayor, before you do downtown development, and before you start talking about uh, bringing new jobs in, you got a major problem here. What is that? You've got to change the public's attitude about itself. Compared to Washington, D.C., I would have to say Jacksonville was backward. Sleepy little town with a terrible inferiority complex. We weren't sure where we were going, what we were going to do. I mean, the. Uh, the beach was great here, the fishing was great here, but we'd always been kind of the place where they put the paper mill and they put the chemical plant. People would fly in, the first thing they'd ask is, what is that smell? As if the smell wasn't bad enough, Jacksonville had another strike against it. When you lived in Jacksonville and you told people that you lived in Jacksonville, they always said, oh yeah, that's where I have to stop to pay the tolls. I mean, the only tolls were 95. Well, 
What are we doing with tolls on a major thoroughfare coming through, giving us a bad reputation with every single person who's driving either north or south? Tearing that down, that was a great day. August 12th, 1989, the days the tolls came down. It was a smelly city. Paper mills blooming out odors. We didn't have any major league sports. We needed something. I used to say, there's three or four things people in Jacksonville love and support. One of them was wrestling, one of them was stock car racing, country music, and football. And we were good at all of it. The Georgia-Florida game uh, had always been very successful. The Gator Bowl game had always been successful. We went through a couple of leagues, and then we ended up with the USFL. And so when they talked about the USFL, Newspaper called me Mayor Jock. There's Mayor Jock out there again trying to get a team. And, uh, but I felt like that if we could go here, we could go on to here, and sooner or later we'll end up with NFL. We, we got to show them we're ready. They were ready. In 1979, an estimated 50,000 people showed up at the Gator Bowl to greet the owner of the Colts, Bob Ursay. He was considering moving his team from Baltimore. I remember watching it on TV, and um, and because it had you know great television coverage, and it was just amazing um, how they were able to get that many people down there. I've been friends with Jake Godbold for 35 years, 36 years, and you know he convinced people to go to the Gator Bowl on the promise of a hot dog and a Pepsi. And that was it, and it just showed the kind of passion that we have, not just for football, but for sports and for activity in general. We were there, it was exciting, and then all of a sudden, here comes this helicopter and lands on the field with Robert Irsay, you know, and all the sports writers said, well, he's just using Jacksonville. Well, guess what? Jacksonville was using him, too. Bob Irsay was a big personality, was kind of a blowhard, and, um, you know, and did a lot of backslapping while he was here. But I just think the 50,000 people that showed up were evidence that, you know, there was something different here than other places. He could have gone anywhere and not gotten that response. He got a pretty big response here. That response didn't go unnoticed. Other teams tried to capitalize on Jacksonville's enthusiasm. Bum Phillips was here. I mean, we, we wooed the Houston Oilers. I mean, we tried to get somebody else's team to come here. You know, we had a few teams that were flirting with leaving their towns, and, and we kind of became a leverage point. If the cities that the, the teams were in didn't give a better deal or a better stadium, then they'd move to Jacksonville. And so we kind of were a, a bridesmaid for a number of times. We developed a relationship. That's what it's really about. And that's how it ended up uh, coming in and morphing into, a, into having a team here. And then the NFL decided that they were going to expand, and we got into the competition for an expansion team. In 1991, the National Football League decided to add two teams to the 28 that already existed. Baltimore, Carolina, Memphis, St. Louis, and Jacksonville were in the running. There was a group in town, there's plenty of money in town, and who really believed that we could support an NFL team. A group called Touchdown Jacksonville led the charge for an NFL team. Among its members were Jacksonville businessmen, Tom Petway and Ron Weaver. Tom Petway told me that Ronnie was going to get his brother Wayne involved, and I was like, you know, who's that? So I look it up, and of course, every woman knows Nine West, and no guys knew it unless they bought it as gifts. So, you know, you do some research, and you realize, oh, this guy's got the the, the money to do this. Wayne is a, is a very successful uh, businessman, had been, had been in the shoe business. We were very encouraged when we found out that he had an interest in, in uh, trying to get a team here. Getting the Weavers on board may have been easy, but very little else was. It was completely unpleasant, cursing and yelling back and forth. I mean, I'm sick looking at these people out here, and we act like kids. We're supposed to be adults, and we just keep going back to the park. The Jacksonville Sports Council is honored to bring the Navy Notre Dame game to Jacksonville. A historic college football rivalry game you don't want to miss. Purchase your tickets and parking today at jacksports.com. It's a celebration of savings at the Belk Anniversary Sale, and you're invited. There's no better time to save on fall's best looks from your favorite brands. 
Take an extra 20% off with your Belk Rewards card. Save even more on bonus buys. 40% off Crown and Ivy. 50% off handbags, wallets, and jewelry. 60% off entire stock luggage. Join us at the Belk Anniversary Sale. Modern Southern Style. Belk. The 2016 Nissan Altima. An IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. With forward emergency braking that can stop for you. Take on sudden stops in Nissan Sentra, Altima, and Maxima with Intelligent Safety Shield Technologies. Get to your local Nissan store today for 0% financing for up to 72 months or get a low $179 per month lease on Altima. Everyone at Harold Harold lives in Jacksonville, um, works in this community. And we understand Jacksonville. It's where we live, it's where our families live. I grew up in Clay County, and it's a pleasure working with people that I love and trust. You will have someone who drives the same roads as you, that attends the same churches as you, that understands the uniqueness to our city. Call us or visit our website, Harold and Harold. Don't settle for less than you deserve. Nothing goes better with Jags football than Papa John's Pizza. Get two large, two-topping pizzas for $7.77 each. Go to PapaJohns.com and enter online promo code JAGS. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's, proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So do you wonder every morning, how am I going to get it all done today? We know life is crazy. Worries about crime, the latest scams, and rip-offs. Will time-saver traffic alerts mess up my commute? We're here to get you all that important news and information, but also give you a great start to your day. The Morning Show on Channel 4 makes mornings happen. And when you have to leave the house, we're still with you. Right here. That's all of us. How'd I get in there? Jacksonville's effort to get an NFL team was heating up with the addition of two key players. Wayne Weaver, chairman and CEO of the Jaguars. Dolores Barr Weaver, partner and chair and CEO of the Jaguars Foundation. Well, as to the, the shoe business, I always say that the latest shoes brought us to the dance. I'm at this function in Amelia Island. And I'm talking to Ron Weaver, one of the nicest men I've ever met. And I said, Ron, there's no way Jacksonville is getting an NFL franchise. Look at who's competing. We're competing against Charlotte, St. Louis. He said, Tom, my brother Wayne always gets what he wants. At first, I just said, you, Ron, you must be kidding me. Jacksonville's not going to get a football team. And, you know, and that, that was kind of a brief conversation, but uh, we had some more conversation about it. And I agreed that if it's something he really wanted to do, we weren't talking about a lot of money uh, at that time, uh, that I would be a partner with him. The league had told us, look, you got all your ducks in a row, but we're not dealing with a committee. We deal with one guy. You got to find one guy. And there wasn't one guy among the people in Touchdown Jacksonville who, either wanted to or had the wherewithal to step up and be that guy. And Ronnie Weaver convinced Wayne that that was the right thing to do. From my, my point of view, uh, it didn't take me long to know that if we were fortunate enough to have this happen in our lives, there would be great opportunity. And we had to make the most of that opportunity if we were given it. So uh, I said to, to the group, to the partnership, when, we get this team, not if you notice, but when we get this team, we will have a foundation and we will serve economically and disadvantaged children. And they all just said, oh, okay. <laughs> the Weavers team consisted of eight partners, including Jeb Bush, son of President George H.W. Bush. We had a good partnership. We had people really that understood Jacksonville, knew, knew Jacksonville, had a Rolodex, uh, of the people here in Jacksonville. Well, a lot had been going on in the in the uh, spring and summer of 1993. The the team yeah, attracted again, Wayne Weaver, uh, which you had to do to to qualify, so to speak, uh, uh, to be a, a a community that would be accepted. Was that you had to have a, a first class or new stadium, 
you had to have an owner that the league, league would accept. And you had to uh, pre-sell club seats that sh would show that the community would support the team. Uh, they attracted Wayne Weaver. Uh, they did not at that time have a first class stadium and that would be what would be the big hang up would be uh, as we went on into the summer. This is a time In the spring of 1993, Touchdown Jacksonville started negotiating with Mayor Ed Austin to fix the old Gator Bowl. It was a very, very unpleasant process. You know, I've negotiated my whole professional career. I was a prosecutor, so you're dealing with criminal defense lawyers that are dealing with people's lives and their liberty, and I'd never had anything like this. The problem was as the competition got more heated and we were able to see what other cities were doing with their stadiums and facilities, um, the original 50 million wasn't going to be enough. So the number kept rising, you know, 60, 70, 80, 90, 103, 111, 114, 120 something. And, um, and the city, capital C, the government, got frustrated with those changes, felt we were kind of being bamboozled, that what we'd agreed to last week is no longer any good. And I kept saying, I'm not going to get involved if we can't be competitive and have a facility that's NFL worthy. Uh, and we got up to the $120 million. Uh, David and Paul had, a, had an expression, um, the dog has died, the dog is alive again, the dog is maybe dead, is sick, um, kind of describing whatever the state of the negotiations ultimately were. All of this was going on against a huge background of skepticism. Really, a minor league city with not just any major league presence, but an NFL franchise? Again, we had a bit of an epiphany, and um, and I remember calling Ed and saying, Ed, look, I, I said, I think we're looking at this wrong because of the escalating prices. Let's pretend that didn't happen. Let's just pretend that out of the blue, the commissioner of football, Paul Tagliabue, called you up and said, oh, I see you're going to do $50 million worth of renovations to the stadium. Uh, I'd like to give you a team, and we're gonna, the team is going to pay rent, and you can do a ticket surcharge that can pay for about $70 million worth of construction. Um, so in effect, you're getting an NFL team for free with a much better stadium than you were originally going to do. And if there's any cost overruns on the construction, we'll pay for it. And he said, can you get that deal? And I said, I think that's the deal we've already got. We just haven't looked at it right. With a contract for a new stadium agreed upon between City Hall and Touchdown Jacksonville, the City Council now had to approve it. I can't begin to tell you how frustrating this is. First, uh, uh, a deal that came to the city council. Uh, uh, when it got to the council, it, it actually uh, didn't make it. It crashed and burned. You want to tell Wayne we, we don't like you? That's what you should say? Let's have some guts. You keep talking about the taxpayers. You mean to tell me you really believe that the taxpayers are not going to benefit from an NFL team? Get real. And uh, Wayne Weaver, uh, for whom I have uh, nothing but the highest respect, packed his bags and said, I'm out of here, and away he went. I said, if, if the city defers or gives us a no vote, then we're out of here. And I said, a deferral is a no vote. So the city council deferred the vote. We held a press conference that night at 11 o'clock, uh, right after the city council meeting, and uh, said, notifying the NFL tomorrow that we're dropping out of the expansion race. My partners and I love Jacksonville. We, we, we really wanted to bring an NFL team to this city. And I can't tell you how disappointed we are that uh, our efforts failed. He was mad, and rightfully so he was mad. A bunch of short-sighted people, you know, making this decision about the literally the future of generations in North Florida based on, you know, a bunch of petty little bickering. I mean, that's, you know, that's, it was just ridiculous. I, I don't know if I was mad, I was really disappointed. I, 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 uh, I thought I, think I had a mad. tear or two. <laughs> because we had, we'd all gotten so close and worked so hard on this. And, and uh, we really had a great, great partnership group. People that really love Jacksonville, people that really believe in Jacksonville. And uh, so it was, it was, uh, it was a disappointing uh, decision that uh, they made. and. I felt that they made the decision because they, they really didn't want a team here.
What a great time to hit the road. In a brand new vehicle from Keith Pierce of Toyota. Fuel prices are down, savings are up. It's your time. The entire car buying experience at this dealership was seamless. Even the financing was amazing. Energy. You can waste a lot of it going back and forth between banks. And that's unfortunate. Because instead of wasting your energy, you could be tapping into ours. When you open an EverBank Yield Pledge Money Market account, you not only get consistent yields in the top 5% of competitive accounts, you get advantages like no monthly account fee and 24-7 live support. It's your money. Make the most of it. Visit online or call. Oof, it's hot in here. It's your kicking chicken sandwich meal. It really brings the heat. <laughs> Is it hot enough? Smoldering. I'm April. I'm July. <laughs> Set your world on fire? Maybe. Indescribably good? Definitely. The Kickin' Chicken Sandwich Meal. Chicken fingers on Texas toast drizzled with tongue torch sauce and ranch. Serve with crinkle fries and a small beverage. Only at Zaxby's. Welcome back. Two of my favorite guests. Cash three and play four. Surprise! We're pick three and pick four now. Whoa! But we still play exactly the same. We just got a fresh new look. Speaking of surprises, I have one for you. Say hello to pick two and pick five! <laughs> Introducing the complete pick family of games! Yeah. We're family now! The new pick two and pick five have joined pick three and pick four to give you more choices in your daily gameplay. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. Here at Keith Pearson Toyota, our customers tell the story. I drove past several dealerships from Ponte Vedra Beach to come out to Keith Pearson Toyota for an exceptional experience. When it comes to the complete automotive experience, I love this place. It's a sad day. It makes the city look, I mean, it's self-explanatory. It just makes the city look like they can't accomplish anything. When Jacksonville City Council members refused to vote on a new stadium contract deal, Weaver ended his bid for an NFL team. I know him very well. Sometimes I think better than he knows himself. Uh, but uh, no, I, I knew he'd be fine. And, you know, he'd get up to fight another day if there was another day. And that's exactly what happened, uh, you know. So, but, you know, everybody was disappointed. It wasn't just our disappointment. It was the whole team's disappointment. I, I follow this dream so closely that I can remember driving to work the day after it fell apart and thinking, okay, Okay, we're not gonna get an NFL team. The sun still came up this morning. The sun is still gonna go down tonight. This is still a wonderful place to live. It's going to be all right. Because as a reporter, you know, we're supposed to be objective. And, and I tried to be objective, but it was, how could you not root for this city if you lived here? Especially if you love football. I have a lot of my friends who don't care anything about football and didn't care anything about whether Jacksonville got a team or not. But for those of us who are football fans, to think that this city getting an NFL franchise and what that would do to the quality of life here, I gotta tell you, I was not impartial anymore. I was impartial in our coverage, but personally in my heart, I wanted us to get this team. I think all of us had the same thought, you know, um, that, okay, I think it's over. I have to face that. There was a September 3rd deadline that everything had to be in place. And so this was July, late July, and uh, it just was not coming together at that time. But behind the scenes, the NFL was still talking to Weaver, hinting about taking the team to St. Louis. It was a very vague conversation, but that uh, they knew I was, had lived in St. Louis for 20 years. But I kind of shut the door on that and said, uh, you know, we've gone through this with Jacksonville and I, 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 don't, I don't think I want to go through this again. Jacksonville had welcomed us, you know, with open arms and really wanted this team. So I said to him, as there was any vague suggestion coming in, I said to him, I am not going any place to have an NFL team if we can't have it in Jacksonville. Don Davis would not let this thing die. He was adamant that this, this should happen and we, were, we had come too far and done too much and convinced the league that there was, a, there was a real possibility to put a team here. 
Can you confirm to us that the city and Touchdown Jacksonville are talking again? No, ma'am. Don Davis called me on a Sunday night and asked if I would get back in the race. I said, Don, I don't think we can get the lease that I would ask for. And he called me back and said, we can get that lease. We can sell the, the season tickets. The city is willing to do that. And we'll do it uh, in a way that's convenient and for everybody. And there won't be any adversarial discussions. <laughs> Carl Cannon was publisher of the local newspaper, but was also intimately involved in the negotiations. My editor at the time, Fred Hartman, came to see me later that day and, and said, uh, we believe that, they, that, the, that the effort is back on for the NFL. And in fact, we think that there's been an agreement that's been hammered out. When he left, I reached over and there was a copy of that agreement on laying face down on my desk. With another agreement between the city and touchdown Jacksonville in hand, it was time to turn yet again to an oppositional city council for approval. It was sort of a dysfunctional city council. This one was really bad. You had five people that basically voted no for everything. It was sort of a block. The bottom line is we needed those 13 votes to get the contract and bring the Jaguars to Jacksonville. The stakes were high. If the deal didn't go through, Weaver was pulling the plug. Football fans crammed in to show their support as Touchdown Jacksonville and other longtime city leaders huddled along a wall. First, uh, the uh, uh, mayor was extended, Mayor Ed Austin, the privilege of the floor. Jacksonville will get a team if we pass this lease tonight and if our community comes through and buys the ticket. And then uh, the council president Don Davis uh, left the chair and uh, he took the floor and he made a, a short but very fervent speech and, and essentially said, well, we don't have any time for any additional negotiations. I urge my fellow council members to vote for this clean. Please don't amend this. Please do not amend it. Because if there's any amendments, this deal fails, and Jacksonville will not get an NFL team. Trust me on that. Davis hit the gavel and said, are there any amendments? Are there any amendments? My hand shot up in the air. I said, Mr. President, he said, Mr. Smith, he called on me, I stood my microphone and he raised his hand and he said I move the previous question from across the way second the motion well at that point I heard voices saying wait we have amendments uh, I have an amendment that, that wouldn't be fair the procedure meant the council couldn't add any amendments to the stadium deal one of Weaver's stipulations Davis uh, looked shocked. He, he looked like uh, somebody had just discovered a rat in the punch bowl at his daughter's coming out party. I think if you go back and talk to people that were there, they will say that a lot of people on the city council was kind of up in arms real quickly that they didn't have a chance for any discussion. The motion passed. Next came the vote on the stadium contract itself. Ballot, record the vote. 14 eyes, 4 nays. <laughs> At that point, 14 yay votes. It had to have it, remember, at least 13 votes. The crowd kind of erupts in jubilation. You know, the community had done enough thinking. It, it didn't need more debate at the city council. Eric did the right thing, and the council did the right thing. Now, the real hard work begins. We've got to sell those tickets. With a contract for a new stadium in place, Touchdown Jacksonville now had to sell thousands of expensive club seats before it even had a team. Jags fans, your 14 area Southern Chevy dealers are giving you the ultimate VIP game day experience and a brand new Chevy Malibu. For more details and to register, visit your local Southern Chevy dealer or go to ChevyWinners.com today. Brought to you by your Southern Chevy dealers. Gym rats are muscle rich. Butchers are meat rich. Me, I'm sports rich. What's sports rich? It means I get as much fantasy football as I want and I get it with FanDuel. Injured QB, not my problem. 
Clay Ward was drafted? No, he wasn't. Being sports rich is like putting 20 tons of sport in a five pound sports bag. Like a nice little carry on. Deposit now for five free entries and get all the fantasy football has to offer. FanDuel, be sports rich. This Jaguar season, DreamFinders Homes will be giving away great prizes before every home game. You could win items such as an iPad Mini, Apple Watch, or Jacksonville Jaguar Club tickets. All you have to do is stop by the stadium home at Gate 4 of Everbank Field before any Jags home game and register for a chance to win. Each game, DreamFinders Homes will select one lucky winner. Visit DreamFindersHomes.com to learn more. See you on game day. Go Jags! Focus is what Baptist and MD Anderson Cancer Center do every day. And our focus is on one thing, the fight to end cancer. Here, teams of cancer specialists use their combined experience with the latest research and technology. Our partnership brings the number one cancer center in America close to home. At Baptist MD Anderson, we share a singular focus, making cancer history. Jags fans, your 14 area Southern Chevy dealers are giving you the ultimate VIP game day experience and a brand new Chevy Malibu. For more details and to register, visit your local Southern Chevy dealer or go to ChevyWinners.com today. Brought to you by your Southern Chevy dealers. Touchdown Jacksonville had Wayne Weaver as their point man. They hammered out a contract for a new stadium. Now came the next challenge. They had to sell thousands of club seats in an extremely short amount of time. 10,000 seats in 10 days, which was sort of Wayne's final condition to uh, be able to make it work. Yeah, I said, I've never sold a football ticket in my life. Uh, you know, I'm a newspaper publisher. The official ticket drive kicked off early this morning. Volunteers at the phone bank fielded hundreds of calls. Right here at Channel 4, Carl, Carl Cannon is the guy who headed up the whole group. Moved here at Channel, the guy's a publisher of the newspaper, spent all his time on the second floor at Channel 4. To get 9,000 families to commit to that was, was a, a pretty tough thing. So what we did do is we, we went to some of the larger corporations and asked them to buy bulk, a bulk amount with the same agreement that if we got the team, that uh, those, if they wanted to, we would, we would resell those tickets to the community because then we knew that there would be demand for tickets. We really need to get folks to go ahead and, uh, and get their application in and, and get, the, uh, get the checks in. If somebody else stood up and said, we'll take 500, and somebody else said, take 250, another take 500, thinking that we weren't going to get a team. So they, had to, they could be magnanimous <laughs> and step up. <laughs> and a little later on, as we get, after we got the team, you've had some tight collars. One ticket cost $1,500 per person for five seasons. The total commitment was $7,500. It was not just that they uh, said, oh, okay, I'll buy a ticket. It was a real effort. With five days left to reach their seemingly insurmountable goal, there was a storm brewing, literally. Plywood, two by fours around the windows, and we're going to hit the grocery store afterwards. And we wake up the next morning and here comes a hurricane up the coast. And so everybody, uh, as you know, everybody starts battening down the hatches and stops thinking about football and starts thinking about safety. And the hurricane kind of typically as they do, it went east of us. Had that uh, become any kind of a major event, it would have really probably ruined the whole thing. We were getting close and running out of time, and we were still short. We were 8,300 8, or something. Carl talked to Billy Morris, who owns the Time Union, Times Union companies. And uh, I think Billy gave him the go-ahead to uh, buy the last 700 tickets. But as it turns out, we have sold over 10,000. Even though the club seat requirement was met, there was still more work to finish before the NFL owners meeting. Jacksonville, a very large metropolitan area. Tom Wade was tasked with putting together a detailed application. We sincerely appreciate the league's serious consideration of Jacksonville for an NFL franchise. In a short amount of time. It was one month. 
There were nights that, uh, that I slept on the floor and woke up and work some more. It was around the clock. You know, you just don't call up the NFL and say, hey, you know, I want to, we want a franchise. Uh, that may be the way it starts. It's, a, it's about building the relationships, about them taking you seriously, about them vetting the city. One of the major points was that the NFL was really formed in the days when the Rust Belt was uh, was healthier, and so uh, the Southeast was 20% of the population and 10% of the team. So uh, one of the reasons, I think, for having a team here is you're putting uh, franchises in places where the people will be, not where they have been. My recollection is that we sent one of the interns in the office uh, with the application to the airport on the plane to hand deliver it to the NFL but it was finished the day it was due. Another group worked to create a video to impress NFL owners. Well, this video was going to be shown for Commissioner Tagliabue and, at that time, NFL teams. I mean, that's a tall order. Uh, they're businessmen, first and foremost. Uh, they look at numbers. I mean, it was a day and night effort. Crews, multiple crews were, were out uh, shooting. Uh, we had crews in, flying up to Washington to film senators. We had crews out in the streets. We had crews on Friday night football at Bishop Kenny, construction bridges, all capturing all of this. When we finally had a script and uh, we were in the room and we realized who would read the opening line, which was a quote that the writer Deborah Simpson found from a John Updike book. It came down to two voices. I mean, we had like 20. And we, we, we honed in on two. One, William Shatner, wasn't available. And we reached out and he just was booked. But the second one we got. You rise up onto bridges over the St. John's River far below. And Jacksonville shines from a number of angles, like a jewel being turned in your hand. James Earl Jones. I thought the video was brilliant. It really showed Jacksonville in a great light and James Earl Jones with his deep baritone voice. By sheer force of will, Jacksonville made all its deadlines, but the most daunting milestone was yet to come. October 25th, 1993. Reporters descended on Chicago for the NFL owners meeting, where two expansion teams would be awarded. Jacksonville's group was there too. Its hopes for a team were considered a long shot. The news wasn't good for Jacksonville. You know, all of the major, you know, sporting publications were saying we didn't have a prayer. We were always listed as last in terms of the competitors. I, I thought we had a chance. Uh, if you read the national media, you wouldn't think so. And uh, I can remember uh, the night uh, the, the, when, the, the, when they were having the league meetings in Chicago, talked to some of the uh, uh, ESPN and other sports reporters, and they hadn't made the announcement yet. So I was asking around, what chance do you think Jacksonville has? And they basically laughed. <laughs> I think we were still feeling very, very confident, um, you know, that it, that it was going to happen. Uh, we'd done the work, so why wouldn't it, why wouldn't it happen, you know? We were prepared. I mean, we had, the night before we went in, we rehearsed with Mr. Weaver. Um, we set the lights the way we wanted them. Less on the room, more on him. So that when he took the spotlight, the spotlight was on him. I would be disingenuous if I didn't say I was a little ner wasn't a little nervous, but uh, I knew how important it was to uh, to be very positive and and uh, very confident. There was a cue within his presentation where he would leave the podium and walk around and almost join them, and almost join them as being one of them, that like he belonged to them. It was not by accident. It was it was planned, but. Wayne didn't need the rehearsal. He, he was ready. He was ready. Ultimately, when the lights went up, it was Wayne. And uh, Mr. Weaver just was extraordinary. We had a, we had a great presentation. Uh, we think that we were able to, uh, again, bring out the uh, salient points of uh, the strengths of our application. It was about the ownership. 
do you want to marry Wayne Weaver, is basically what it came down to, and his associates. And they wanted to marry Wayne Weaver. They felt comfortable in Wayne Weaver. And the irony is, Wayne Weaver felt comfortable around them. Feeling hopeful after their presentation, Jacksonville's group waited expectantly. Their hopes were soon dashed. Good evening. I'm very pleased to announce that the Carolina Panthers have been unanimously selected as the... So they picked Charlotte. But that's not all the NFL owners decided. As far as the second team goes, uh, the 30th franchise, we uh, will be making that decision at a league meeting on November 30th. Well, that was the, the hurdle that I, I felt that uh, it was slipping away from us at that point. I was resentful. I thought they were changing the rules in the middle of the game and they needed to make a pick. And uh, so that's when I thought, you know, the jig is up. We're not going to get it. Uh, they're, they're just trying to, trying to figure out a way to let St. Louis settle in. And the feeling was that St. Louis was the front runner. I remember when Charlotte got the team and the second franchise wasn't awarded, I was pretty sure we weren't going to get it. St. Louis was having a struggle. There were sort of two groups. I think one controlled the stadium, one had the money, and they just couldn't work out a deal between them. But the NFL gave St. Louis a month to try to get its act together, and they never did. Had a party planned for that evening. Well, we didn't get the team, but we still had our party, and we knew there was another opportunity. Wayne Weaver was very angry, uh, told me, you know, I'm going to go in there and find out why we didn't get a football team. And so I met with Tagler and said, look, Paul, if, if you're using us as a stalking horse, you know, just tell us and let us go home because it's not fair that, uh, that we're going through this. Uh, he said, Wayne, uh, I'll tell you, you guys are still in the running here. And knowing Paul, that uh, the the little that I'd spent time with him over, the, over those months and years, uh, I felt that uh, he was a man of high integrity and uh, he wouldn't lead me on. So I said, we'll continue to go. You pick yourself up and dust yourself off and you move forward. The NFL would award the second franchise in 30 days. It was an excruciating wait, but not one without hope. I looked at Wayne and I said, you know, I'm a Catholic, so I really don't believe in signs. But I'm telling you, man, you're getting a team today. Gira aquí, Pearson Toyota. Our customers tell the story. I drove past several dealerships from Ponte Vedra Beach to come out to keep Pearson Toyota for an exceptional experience. When it comes to the complete automotive experience, I love this place. It's a celebration of savings at the Belk Anniversary Sale, and you're invited. There's no better time to save on fall's best looks from your favorite brands. Take an extra 20% off with your Belk Rewards card. Save even more on bonus buys. 40% off Crown and Ivy. 50% off handbags, wallets, and jewelry. 60% off entire stock luggage. Join us at the Belk Anniversary Sale. Modern Southern Style. Belk. The 2016 Nissan Altima. An IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. With forward emergency braking that can stop for you. Take on sudden stops in Nissan Sentra, Altima, and Maxima with Intelligent Safety Shield Technologies. Get to your local Nissan store today for 0% financing for up to 72 months or get a low $179 per month lease on Altima. If you're going to be a good personal injury attorney, it's really all you should do is personal injury work. You have to focus on it to get good at it. The rules, what's admissible in the evidence, the way you can try a case, very difficult. At our firm, that's all we do. We don't do anything but personal injury work. So if you've been hurt for whatever reason, come see a personal injury lawyer. Come see us, it doesn't cost anything. We'll consult with you and give you our opinion. No charge. Harold and Harold. Don't settle for less than you deserve. What really impressed me was they treated me with the same respect that they treated my husband. I had a great time purchasing my automobile, and the team here is outstanding. Here at Keith Pearson Toyota. Your number one. Keith Pearson Toyota. Your hometown superstore. November 30th, 1993. The intense 30-day wait was over. Mind you, we're in Chicago. I mean, we're in down, we're in the middle of Chicago. We're running along. 
and uh, it's cold, it's freezing. At one point, Wayne said, hey, you know, let's slow down a little bit. You're killing me here. And so when we stop, we kind of laugh. And I look this way, and there's a grove of trees there. And Wayne will verify this, too. A 12-point buck steps out of the grove of trees, not 10 yards from us, and looks over at us, and then looks away, and then kind of walks back into the trees. I looked at Wayne and I said, you know, I'm a Catholic, so I really don't believe in signs, but I'm telling you, man, you're getting a team today. <laughs> So I didn't go to the second selection a month later because I just thought thought we were going to lose and wanted to manage kind of the city's the city's feeling because uh, I knew it was going to be a huge letdown if we weren't picked. I'm getting chills just thinking about it. I mean, the day that we knew that announcement was coming, who was going to get that franchise team? Good afternoon, I'm Deborah Giannola with Rob Sweetie. We just kind of sat on the set that day, listening to the announcement on the edge of our seats and on the edge of everybody else's seat, right? Because we're broadcasting all of Jacksonville's sitting on the edge of their couch as we're sitting on the end of our news chairs, right? The Jacksonville's owners group waited in a hotel suite upstairs from where the NFL owners were voting. So I, I'm up there, I'm in the room. The, they clear the room. And as they clear the room, they tell all media that they have to leave. I'm sitting on a couch like this next to Tom Petway. I pick up the plans to the stadium and put them in front of my face. I look over and all Tom Petway does is smile and kind of chuckle. And I'm reading them. I mean, I'm dressed in a suit. I'm well-dressed just like everybody else. I don't look like some scribe who's sweating and, you know, writing notes down. Well, the security threw the Times Union reporter out and every other reporter in there. And as they're closing the door, I hear this guy screaming, the cabars are still in there, he's still in there. And now Tom Petway's laughing. So I put the plans down and we're sitting there. So, um, you know, a few minutes go by, we're all waiting, you know, different things. You know, our, our rumors are going around. All of a sudden, Ron Weaver, Wayne's brother, kind of bursts in the front door, and he is, he's red-faced. And he looks at his brother, and I was, I don't know why I was standing there. I was standing there with David Selden, Ron, and Wayne Weaver, Dolores Weaver, and me. And he looks at Wayne, and he goes, you're gonna get a team. And everybody was so stunned, I spoke out of turn, but the reporter in me just kind of popped out of the back and I said, how do you know that? And he said, because the finance and expansion committees have both voted yes on Jacksonville and the full membership has never turned that down. And I said, how do you know that? He said, because the chairman of the finance committee just stopped me in the hallway and told me. I turned to David Selden and I said, I think I should go. We have just received word from Chicago that a source close to Touchdown Jacksonville has been told the Finance and Expansion Committees voted for Jacksonville. This is unconfirmed. We go now to Tom Wills and Sam Kavars, who are live in Chicago to hear what more they've heard. Sam, Tom, it's pretty exciting. It How is about exciting. That? It certainly is. And Deborah, I have confirmed through sources in Touchdown Jacksonville. Mr. Weaver was told that they would have the vote in that uh, if he did not get the team, that he would be given a call from the commissioner. He'd give him a telephone call and tell him so. And then if he did get the team, uh, that they would send a security guard up there, NFL security guard up to get him. And uh, what happened was he had walked outside the room into the hallway and I was in the hallway as well. And a security guard can't got off the elevator walked out and Mr. Weaver knew he had a team. They're taking us through the back way in the gunnels. And I said something to Mayor Austin uh, about, well, it's a relief that we've got the team. And the security said, Mr. Weaver, I didn't say you got the team. Of course, he would have been in trouble had he oh, said that. 
And then we get down and they put us in this room next to the meeting where the league was having a meeting. And they were calling the roll. And they were voting yes, no. I don't know what they were voting on. I'm thinking, wait a minute, they're voting <laughs> on the team. And whatever they were voting on was voted down. And I said, my God, what are they voting on? Because nobody had come in the room and said anything to us yet. And Austin came over and put his arm. He said, even if we don't get the team, love you, man. <laughs> and about, about that time, uh, Neil Austin came in with Roger and shook our hands and said, uh, congratulations. And then Paul, when he finished his meeting, <laughs> came in and congratulated us. And then we had a chance to go in, and I had a chance to go in and speak to the ownership. This is a special edition of Eyewitness News. Good afternoon. I'm Deborah Giannolis with Rob Sweeting. Jacksonville, are you sitting down? We have just learned that Touchdown Jacksonville says that it has been confirmed that Jacksonville has become the 30th NFL franchise. Holy s***. We so got it. We need somebody to pinch us. Uh, it's my pleasure to announce that the uh, membership has selected Jacksonville as the 30th NFL club. I just want to say, uh, Commissioner, that uh, the decision that the NFL made here today that Jacksonville is certainly going to make you proud. I know that nobody gave us a chance to, to win. I mean, it, it was a shock to the, to, the, to the football fans around the nation and, and certainly the media. We've, we've got a city that rallied behind us, that, that stood up when we needed them to stand up, and that didn't go unnoticed uh, around the NFL with the other owners. I knew that, uh, that we were the dark horse, and nobody expected us to win. But that makes it that much sweeter when we, when we won, and people started recognizing that uh, Jacksonville was a city on the move. Even though it wasn't realistic, and uh, then got the call from Ed, we had the team, and I just want to go, I'll be damned. I mean, it was just amazing. It was just a euphoria. Well, even with a team in Charlotte is underrepresented uh, in the Southeast, and that putting a team in Jacksonville would provide a, a very strong base for the National Football League in what is, uh, if not the fastest growing part of the country, certainly one of the fastest growing parts of the country. Jake Godbold came to Channel 4 the day of the NFL owners meeting and was sitting upstairs in our conference room alone with a camera pointed at him and <laughs> Rob and Deb are anchoring our coverage. And when we got the announcement, Jake broke down and wept because he was the visionary who saw it through, saw it come through. I gotta blow my nose, I'm sorry. After we did get the team, uh, some media person said to me, well, what do you think about, you know, getting this team? And I said, well, it's the second best November 30th we've ever had. Well, that really took them by shock. And I said, you have to understand, our first child was born on November 30th. So that makes it all very clear, right? So, uh, so I called my son and said, on your birthday, um, Jacksonville has an NFL team. But what I do remember, Stacy, is coming into Jacksonville Airport, huh? All these excited people turned out at that airport to welcome Weaver and the touchdown Jacksonville people home. And they, if you want to see unbridled joy, unbridled jubilation, that crowd in that airport when he came home, when he came back to Jacksonville with that team. After that, things were busy on the shores of the St. Johns River. In just over 19 months, Jacksonville Municipal Stadium went up faster than any other major league stadium in North America. Wayne Weaver scoured the country and chose Boston College head coach Tom Coughlin to lead the new team. The unique thing about the Jacksonville Jaguar job was that the way that Mr. Weaver had structured the team, that the head coach would be in charge of personnel. So therefore, I would have personnel. I'd be able to select the players that were going to be a part of our team, as well as, you know, be the head coach. And I thought, this is very unique. So a week or whatever it was later that I come to town, 
it's been pouring rain, you know how that goes here. And the, the, the road to the stadium was dirt, whatever it was. The water was up to the top of the hubcaps. The stadium had been knocked down completely. There was one concrete stanchion standing there. There was a trailer sitting in front of that stanchion. I got out of the car, you know, I was up to my ankles in water and mud, and I slopped up to the, the trailer and I opened the door and I believe I was the seventh employee of the Jacksonville Jaguars. They didn't have a desk for me. They said, oh, why don't you use the one that Wayne uses? He's busy a lot of times, not here. You can use that one. Okay. So now I'm thinking to myself, what in the world have you gotten yourself into in this one? So and that's kind of the way it was for a while. In Tom Coughlin's eight seasons, the Jaguars became the most successful expansion team in league history. They made it to four consecutive playoff appearances and went to the AFC Championship game twice. This team wanted to bring to Jacksonville a winner as soon as possible. Coach Coughlin uh, took pride in wanting to take a team that wasn't really talented and make them competitive immediately. And I think everyone kind of felt that, a little added pressure, uh, because they felt a kinship with the people of Jacksonville. And that's what made it special. Well, you knew that if you came down here and played these Jaguars, that you was going to have to deal with a tough bunch of guys, you are going to have to deal with the heat, and last but not least, we are going to have to deal with our fans before you got out of here. I was honored uh, to be a part of that franchise uh, history, um, and always will. Besides the win, the Jaguars gave Jacksonville residents something more meaningful, self-confidence. It gives the town an identity, and um, I, I never would have anticipated it would have as positive an, of an impact recruiting businesses, traveling across the country, trying to put economic development deals together. Um, it's a big deal. I mean, it's a really, really big deal. They know the Jaguars immediately. That you don't have to say, oh yeah, we're on the St. John's River, we're, we're in North Florida. I mean, people know exactly who we are now. How could anything be any better other than having our children and now, of course, our grandchildren, but, um, you know, it's really special, really special. You know, we've been fortunate to, to have had a lot of success in our lives, but I look back and say the, the 17 years of owning the, the Jaguars was a great time for our family.